When you hear this, what would you describe it as? Angelic, heavenly, beautiful, just good music. And now when I put on Uncle Aaron's beats from PP Spider-Man, what goes through your head? Nails on a chalkboard, a fork scraping a plate, rent. Horrible man created atrocities come to mind when hearing this God forsaken beat. No wonder why he went to crime. Cause no bills would ever be paid if this was his profession. I mean, it's just bad music. Music is a funky rhythmic set of beeps and boops and tss and pops and sometimes And when these beeps and boops and bops and bangs synchronize together in a symphony or a catchy tune, it sparks a joy to my eardrums when listening to these pieces of skillfulness, genius, art. Sometimes the music can be so good that when it gets interrupted by anything, you can't help but feel angry. Like your wife kissing you in front of Willem Dafoe. Bitch, get off me. Sometimes music can feel so right in your ears, like it's pouring cold water directly into the eardrum. Ah! Other times, good music could spark an emotion that could only be expressed with crying. <laughs> and other times, good music could rethink the way you view life in a euphoric sense. All of those interpretations come into this. I cannot write think pieces. But you get it! Good music sounds good! It makes us go, ooh! Even though music is subjective, we all know it can recognize a good song when we hear it. Everybody knows Free Bird Bops, Party Anthem Rocks, I Milly really Rock or Any Black, all universally beloved songs among all cultures. Any sane person can recognize a goat when they hear them. We can recognize good music just as much as we can recognize bad music. Bad music in most cases is a plague to the human mind and ears, like eating the butt of a woman who didn't wipe. In most cases, it's just straight bad, but sometimes it could come in all types of delicacies. Okay, what the hell do I mean by that? I just mean music is one of the most subjective genres that exist. It isn't like movies or TV shows where at least some people there have to have at least some level of talent and artistry to make a decent product. Nah, anybody with a phone and a mic could make a song of them talking on beat to a metronome instrumental. And I can guarantee you there's still a fan base out there for them. Cause even a low effort or sloppily composed song can still sound better or at least have infinite more replay value than a master at their craft releasing something. I was going to make this video about good music versus bad music, displaying some songs and artists I like and hate, like Taylor Swift, good, Weezer, bad. You know, just spinning facts. But, but that's just boring. So instead, you're going to hear a barely educated man raving about the versatility of good music and quote unquote trash music. When thinking of good music, what comes to mind? Michael Jackson? Bob Dylan? ancient Mesopotamian music? Nah, for me, it's definitely the vibes. That's what's important, how a song makes me feel. You see, music ain't just for entertainment. It's whatever you in the mood to experience at that moment. Like if I'm in the mood of breaking, I wanna listen to metal or heavy bass boosted rap to enhance my experience of me destroying my house. If I'm in the mood to float, I'm gonna put on Radiohead or anything that's considered shoegaze. That combined with a gas station cart will make you feel like you're experiencing heaven. For real. And if I'm in the mood to sleep, I'd put any new little baby song to experience true slumber. That's how music is. The experience is a majority of my enjoyment. When I have a bad time with it, that's not good. Like if your dad catches you listening to something you think is peak, but the rest of the world might not vibe with it, you're gonna remember that time the next time you listen, and the time after that, ruining the song for you for all of eternity. Cause you always have that memory of, oh, 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 oh my dad heard that. Be careful if you're shuffling your like songs on Ox too. Imagine you and your gang in the car bumping the good shit. Then your playlist started playing your Steven Universe songs you forgot you added back in high school. And they're all like, the hell is this you be listening to, bruh? How'd you know we love this song? Oh my god, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. I'm into fat pictures. Imagine that happens. Me and the gang are in a polyamorous relationship now for life. That's just the way it has to be. Also mentioning Steven Universe made me remember how music greatly affects a TV show and movie experience.
When watching a movie, the music can literally suck you into the world of the film. It can make you feel like you travel in the world of the Lord of the Rings, or make you feel like a kid again when watching Andy playing with Woody and Buzz. A film giving you an emotion like that is phenomenal, but it doesn't always have to be that. Sometimes a montage could really up a movie's quality with the right song choice. It could make a scene of some nerd making his spider cosplay costume more intriguing, or gut punch you like Up's first five minutes. Like this scene without its iconic music, it would not hit the same. That nigga ain't gonna be no sound. Whoa, true. But in my opinion, they could have switched out the music with another song. Like, like Seven Years by Lucas Graham. In, in fact, if they switched the music with that instead, I think the scene would have been more powerful. Don't lie. You agree with me. It's even better when both the soundtrack and movie itself work together as one unit. Like in Oppenheimer. Everybody in their Nana has seen it already. So we all know how amazing the soundtrack is. Each song blending in with every scene, making every event in this movie feel more epic than it actually is. Even when it's just him teaching it in the classroom. Ludwig Granola did an amazing job with the music of the film. And since the music is blaring the entire movie, it never takes you out of the experience. And musicals. Some people don't mess with musicals, but I mess musicals. with a good musical. Some people don't like them because they think, ew, why are they singing and dancing in public out of nowhere? Kinda cringe, not gonna lie. Not one of y'all have ever felt whimsical. Not one of y'all have seen a small glimpse of the beauty that life has to offer. So extravagant. That it made you want to sing? It don't even gotta be the beauty of life. Eating a good burger would provoke me to sing and dance on the spot. Musicals are not unrealistic. You guys are just pixies. You see no magical color in anything. Musicals are f***ing fire. Acting like La La Land and The Lion King aren't peak. Especially Renaissance Disney musicals. Disney were dropping buckets like they were the 97 Bulls back then. Wanted. A movie can take you so far with just this music alone. Like, have y'all seen Grease? The story's almost non-existent. The main leads fall in love. Then they sing. Then they race. Then they sing. Then they go to heaven. Then they sing. Like, the story doesn't matter too much. Plus, these are the oldest high schoolers I've ever seen in my life. This nigga 40. But it don't matter, because the songs were... So peak! And I don't mean that loosely. Some of the best songs you can hear in TV and movies are in this. Summer Nights. You don't wanna know one? Hopelessly devoted. The fact these are all in the same movie blows me away and continues blowing me. You think you're gonna hear music as majestic as this while you wait for your favorite artist to drop? I don't think so. A good musical could take you a long way, but a bad one? Makes you want to get off at the first stop. And there ain't no better example than the new Mean Girls movie, bro. I don't even know why I watched it. I've heard everyone say it was bad. I watched the trailer for myself, thought it looked bad. I heard one Fentanyl Pam song, thought it sounded bad. Saw the new Karen and Regina, thought they looked bad. Oh, wait, I think I found out why I watched the movie. I'ma eat it. Ah! Plus, I'm a huge fan of the original. Literally, it's top 20 movies ever. So when I heard they were going to make a remake and it's going to be a musical, I instantly thought, well, this shit about to suck. And it did. The music was terrible. Every time this girl opened her mouth and hit a note, I hated it. Every time the students sang, I hated it. This song made me want to vaporize whoever was responsible of putting it in this booth. Not one song is good or decent. None. Like, I don't... Almost every time they break into song and dance, it looks and sounds so awkward. The lyrics are bad. Like, y'all wanted to make this a musical and not know how to make a musical? Why? Why Why did you guys make this? Why Why you guys like this? Even outside the music, the movie farts on the original's story, characters, and comedy. There's no redeeming qualities. It's just shit. <laughs> okay, that's not all true. The new Damien carried this film hard. I I'll give him that. I'd even argue he did better than the original. Like, he's genuinely the only humorous part in this movie. But even he couldn't save it. Because every time Katie's actress is on screen, it feels like she's trying to trap me inside you a domain expansion. Kiss. Bad movie, bad musical, and bad music. This movie makes me fear when characters start singing in movies. I don't want to fear music in movies. I don't want to talk about this no more.
It hurts. And for TV shows, let me gush over this quickly. But I love when non-musically focused shows just pull out with the biggest banger you've ever heard in your life. SpongeBob and Amazing World of Gumball do this all the time. Whenever a SpongeBob Christmas special is made, just believe the SpongeBob writers will cook a jingle like no other. Gary Come Home is sadder than any Mitski yeah, 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 song. Black, black, black. And Rip Pants, do I need to continue? Even just the background music is iconic. And I don't just mean the background music of them just talking and stuff. I mean the music cues of one day close up on some ugly ass mug that's the best and gumball has less songs but it makes each one count i don't know who tells the voice actors of gumball and darren to perform like they're young and still thriving mindless behavior but whoever you are thank you i don't even need to praise them when you yourself hear a vocal like this you'd want to text her back too Anyways, video games. There's music in them sometimes. Music in video fuck? games is more important to me than the video game itself being what able to work. Fuck? That's how serious this is, bro. I love the GTA 5 radio so much. Driving at night in game whilst listening to West Coast classics is better than therapy. Undertale's soundtrack always makes me want to ascend. And the Jet Set Radio soundtrack? I, I did not know life could be so good. But Nintendo music? Never, Mario. I'm a big Pokemon fan, and the soundtracks for each place you enter is marvelous. The friendly neighborhood vibes of Litter Town. The Poke Santa theme feeling like a big old hug from Nurse Joy herself. And Lake from Pokemon Diamond. It's not even just their games. The menu music on their console apps goes hard. The music on Mii Plaza just made me want to grind harder on the game whenever I played it on my 3DS. This goofy ass song that's in every YouTube video in existence. And the Wii startup music. It's like Nintendo were summoning the dark evil spirit of John Lennon to make this music so fire. I love Nintendo so much. I love it. But they don't love me. Nintendo music is amazing. But nothing, nothing compares to Sonic music. I don't even know where to start or end in this conversation, but like Sonic was such a big part of my childhood and the music in all the games, even in the anime. It's just, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Y'all seen WrestleMania night two this year? That's how each and every Sonic song feels to me that's how good i think it is like sonic in general could be a video on its own but i'm just gonna say this in this world is the best video game song of all time no debate it's too good it's just too good Sleeping, you fat no. fuck. Music is a wait. I I've said the word music too much. I I'm gonna use a different word. Uh, burritos. Burritos is delicious. Ah. Sometimes even the quote unquote bad ones. Have y'all seen the playlist for terrible songs on YouTube? This is some of the greatest stuff I've heard. I've even asked my Twitter <coughs> uh, for some trash. And even they were giving me pee. You might think you might like me, but I promise that you won't. I've designed this web of lies. I do things I say I don't. Not to say there's not a lot of bad music out there. Believe me, there is. Any rapper that rap fast and he just say nothing, like rap slow and say nothing. Just cause you yapping like Alvin and the Chipmunks over there don't mean I'm impressed. Turn it off! I'm about to expose myself right now, but I don't care. I'm not gonna lie about it no more and pretend these songs and musicians are bad. But a hundred gecks, bro? I'm tired of pretending to hate them, bro. Like, yeah, I, I still don't like Money Machine. And it's also not like I'm in love with every single song they put out, but when they hit, they really hit. Why is Hollywood Baby one of the hardest songs I've heard this year? Dumbest Girl Alive is hard too. And I also love that uh, Doritos Cheetos Libido song. I, I really like that. Their new album in general, kind of, it kind of smacks. It's a fun listen. They still hit or miss for me though. Don't clown me too much. Blade? 
no, nah, no, I'm, I'm not taking this blade disrespect. I refuse. I had a short blade phase back in freshman year. Red light and working on dying were consistently on my rotation. This dude was basically my juice world. And I do admit his music is for sad middle schoolers that are depressed because their mom said no to the friend sleepover. And his new music ain't nothing to write home about either. But to little old me back in freshman year, you have no idea how good Blade was to me. Plus, I don't want to tolerate any disrespect from anybody named Pokemon333. Your days are numbered. Jay-Z, K-pop, the Roblox song. Y'all don't know good music if it smacked you with a fish. AJR? Oh, okay, they are, they are pretty bad. You see, we all got different definitions of bad. And since that is the case, is there really such thing as bad music? Pop a bitch yeah, you're right. Burritos are a magnificent form of art, bringing a multitude of different sounds and genres that I just yeah. wanted a fanboy over. <laughs> if you know how to play an instrument, love it. If you don't know, learn it. And if you don't like music, get it. And that's kind of all I have to say. Music is a beautiful thing. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And in conclusion, Good morning, Albuquerque. You are right now listening to 99.9 .9 Death Metal Radio. Playing only the deadliest death metal you've ever heard. Your parents hate us, your neighbors hate hearing us, and your wife left you. Playing heavy death metal all day, 24-7, 365, until you drunk drive. What you calling for? Hi, I ran over my grandma with a forklift just so I can be on Death Metal Radio! Awesome. 99.9, .9, where the death never ends.